Okay, we're here today on realairculture.com. We are with Sean Gardner. Sean is the global wheat lead for uh, Monsanto. Welcome today, Sean. Good afternoon. Okay, Sean, we're going to talk obviously about, about wheat. Uh, Monsanto has uh, entered uh, the wheat game along with uh, several other of uh, your competitors. Why the newfound interest in wheat? Well, I think uh, there's a couple of factors, Sean. Um, firstly, wheat's the biggest crop globally, 550 million acres. So for companies like ours that are involved purely in agriculture, it's always been interesting based on its size. Um, second thing would be that um, we've invested hundreds of millions in corn research and development in the last 10 years. And we believe that many of the techniques and the, and the technologies that we've developed for corn could be very useful in wheat. And thirdly, in the last couple of years, we've seen a huge amount of interest from stakeholders in the wheat value chain calling for companies like ours to think about investing in technology and wheat. That, that's one of the things that we hear lots in, in terms of the wheat industry is the lack of investment and so all of a sudden now we have potentially a lot of investment coming into wheat. Uh, is there any differences uh, in the Canadian and US dynamic in terms of wheat? So it's very early days. Um, we've been We've been back in wheat less than a year, and, and to be honest, we're thinking through a lot of a lot of the strategies and approaches. Um, I think what is true is that the U.S. industry um, growers, exporters, millers, bakers, and others have probably been more vocal at this stage about their interest in technology in wheat um, than we've seen in Canada. But we're, we're very hopeful, and, and we're looking forward to you know encouraging signs of stakeholder support from Canada. Uh, and so you'd mentioned earlier, uh, you're still in the, in the process of sort of, you know, aligning the chess pieces and, and mm. looking at product development. Where, where do you think the focus is going to be in terms of uh, product development? Well, I think a couple of things. Um, we always see products in terms of both breeding and biotechnology. Uh, the two go hand in hand, and unless you have great genetics, great biotechnology doesn't really matter. Um, and so where we're participating actively, and um, we definitely will be in the US where we've already made a move buying a seed company, um, the two things we're going to do, and I would think of them as short and medium term and then medium to long term. Short and medium term, we're going to invest very, very heavily in, in breeding technologies um, such as doubled haploids and marker-assisted breeding. Uh, which will use some of the um, analytical power that has been so successful in corn to help try and drive rates of yield growth in wheat. And then at the same time, this sort of medium to long term investment is around trying to develop biotechnology traits which bring real value to every wheat grower. And we're thinking in terms of, of yield and stress traits, so um, drought, um, nitrogen use efficiency, inherent yield. Those are the kinds of genes we want to stack together in wheat to bring yield, real yield and, and uh, increased stability and performance to wheat growers. So I noticed there that uh, you didn't talk about one of the things that a lot of growers immediately jump to when they think about Monsanto and wheat, and that is uh, herbicide tolerance or in this case Roundup Ready. Um, you didn't mention it. No, and that really reflects how we're thinking about our biotech product development. It may well be that we um, put herbicide tolerance in our products. Um, that might be Roundup, it might be other um, uh, tolerance to other active ingredients. And as you know, many companies are working on many different types of herbicide tolerance. I think the key message I would have for, for your viewers and others is that that will be a very secondary part of the product development. The key, the key thing we're looking for is yield and stress, drought, nitrogen use efficiency, um, things that can show we're producing wheat more sustainably. The, the goal is to try and drive higher yields with less inputs per unit produced. Right. Uh, we've talked a lot on realairculture.com before about uh, the second generation of biotech traits is about uh, not pushing traits, but you know, more pull type traits that have a greater mm. impact, not only on the farm, but also on the environment, mm. things like drought uh, and things like that. Do you, do you think that's very true? Um, I do. I'm realistic. I don't ever think that biotechnology acceptance is going to be an easy thing to achieve. And what I'm absolutely sure about is that it's going to need the whole industry in any given market to pull together to make the case for and to support biotech wheat. 
I do believe that the kind of sustainability traits that we're looking at are going to create an easier job um, for biotech acceptance um, than maybe some of the older traits that we saw in other crops. Well, Sean, thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, we look forward to possibly talking again in the future. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate the opportunity.